More about that and the AstraZeneca vaccine and some controversy there. Let's turn to Yanir Barham. He's the president of the New England Complex Systems Research Institute. Let's start there with this hodgepodge approach where one country may be doing one thing, another doing another. Um, how much confusion does that sow and how much of a problem does that present? Well, in the meantime, the, the challenge of facing the pandemic with uh, 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 confusion is clearly a problem, but if some countries were doing it very well, then we would be, they would be mimicked by others, but the overall strategies are not converging on strong action to achieve elimination of the virus. But we're facing now particular challenges with the AstraZeneca vaccine in terms of the uh, recent observation that there are uh, blood clotting events and trying to figure out how to balance the one kind of harm, which is the virus itself, with the harm that is being seen in small numbers of cases of vaccinations. And, and that creates a challenge that is fraught with a lot of uncertainty because we don't have a lot of information about that harm based on the current information. People are trying to balance things and coming to the conclusion that stopping transmission with a vaccine is better than the consequences of the vaccine in terms of the harm. But, but that's a subtle question based upon a lot of uncertainty. And so one can imagine that different countries, different authorities are struggling to come to uh, uh, c conclusions about what is the right thing to do next. Dr. Barham, let me uh, ask you another question. You know that in addition to the virus, there's this other epidemic out there. It's misinformation, conspiracy theories. So one of the worries or criticisms you would hear as the race for the vaccine was accelerating was that, wait, we're going too fast. Uh, we may be cutting corners. This could be dangerous. So how concerned are you that this controversy may fuel those sorts of narratives? So it, it may fuel the narratives. I mean, we, we know that these uh, vaccinations are being authorized under emergency use authorizations. Uh, we would prefer to have a lot more information about their efficacy and about their safety. But uh, the fact that we are facing the uh, pandemic doesn't give us the choices. We have to make the best choices that we have available given the information that we have. And of course, there are going to be um, uh, challenges to the decisions that are being made. And the important thing is to have full transparency about what's going on. And in the context of the AstraZeneca vaccine, there has been uh, quite a bit of transparency. The challenge is that the, um, the safety is now at issue. Um, and then we have to figure out how to balance things carefully. But the main thing that we want to do in the context of having misinformation and disinformation uh, campaigns or, or um, uh, viral uh, uh, actions is to make sure that we have consistent and clear, careful scientific information that is being made public. That's the way to gain trust. What about this concept of mandatory vaccines? Uh, so in general, public health uh, actions that are saving lives uh, that are shared responsibility often require um, uh, requ um, uh, public uh, good decisions. And, and the, the idea that new restrictions or new uh, conditions may be placed in the context of a pandemic should not be surprising. There are a lot of regulations that we have in the society that are designed to promote safety of individuals. And, and they should be debated and they should be discussed. But there is ample precedent in normal uh, life that there are restrictions that may be placed. Whether or not specific restrictions are the right ones depends, again, upon having careful, open, and honest conversations where there isn't a fear that the decisions are being made for reasons other than clear public safety issues. Yanir Barham uh, joining us from Boston. Thanks so much for your insights. Thank you.